So in this concluding lecture, I would like to address two issues. Um, the first is that the quantum spin Hall insulator and the trivial insulator are distinguished by what, by what we call a Z2 topological invariant. The second issue is the extent to which this topological distinction, which was introduced as a property of a non-interacting band structure, survives in the presence of electron-electron interactions. Now, the churn insulator is distinguished from the trivial insulator by the integer value churn number. This bulk topological invariant determines the number of chiral edge modes, uh, chiral modes that occur on the edge. For the quantum spin Hall effect, the up and down spins have opposite churn numbers, so the total churn number is zero. When spin is not conserved, the individual churn numbers lose their meaning. Nonetheless, time reversal symmetry protects the helical edge modes, so there must still be a topological difference when time reversal is present. In fact, what we now know is that with time reversal, there are only two distinct topological classes, and they're distinguished by what we call the Z2 topological invariant. Now, the mathematical formulation of the Z2 invariant is a little bit involved, but what I'd like to show you here is that it is very easy to understand why there are two and only two topological classes. This can be done by thinking about the possible structures of the edge states. So here I show uh, two hypothetical uh, band structures for the edge of a two-dimensional insulator as a function of the momentum along the edge. Now I've only plotted half of the Brillouin zone going from k equals zero to k equals pi because the other half is simply a mirror image due to time reversal symmetry. Now it's always possible, so we see that there's a, a valence band and a conduction band, it's always possible that there could be states within the energy gap that are localized at the edge. However, if they are present, then Kramer's theorem guarantees that they must be twofold degenerate at k equals zero. Now, if there's no spin orbit interaction, then every state is twofold degenerate. So nothing is, 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 is new and it's not so interesting. However, if there is a spin orbit interaction, then in general the states will split, the degenerate states will split away from k equals zero. And in that, because in that case, the Kramer's partner um, for k is at minus k. However, when you get to momentum pi, um, plus pi and minus pi correspond to the same crystal momentum. And so it follows that the states at k equals pi must be Kramer's degenerate as well. So now you can see why there are two and only two topological classes. Because in the absence of any other accidental degeneracies, there are, there are only two ways the Kramer's pairs at k equals zero can connect with the Kramer's pairs at k equals pi. Either they connect pairwise, um, uh, so if they connect pairwise, then it's, it's, it's possible to get rid of the edge states completely by pushing them up or pushing them down and, and, and pushing them outside of the, um, uh, of the energy gap. Okay? So you might have edge states, but you don't necessarily do. However, if the Kramer's pairs switch partners, then you can push them up or down all you want. Um, and as long as time reversal symmetry remains unbroken, they're impossible to get rid of. There will always be an odd number of bands crossing the Fermi energy in between zero and pi. So how does a two-dimensional insulator decide which scenario occurs at the edge? Well, it's the bulk Z2 topological invariant which characterizes the band structure. It's just like the bulk churn number which, um, um, which determines the number of chiral edge modes. Now, so all of this discussion was predicated on the independent electron approximation, which allows us to study um, one-body Hamiltonians. Now, when electrons interact with one another, one is forced to con uh, confront the much more difficult many-body problem. For the quantum Hall effect, we've seen Laughlin's deep flux threading argument, which relies only on gauge invariance and guarantees that the edge states survive interactions. So I'd like you to show you an analogous argument for the topological insulator. So consider an annulus geometry where we thread a magnetic flux through a hole. Now recall that for the integer quantum Hall effect, Laughlin's argument shows you that if nu is equal to 1, when you thread a quantum of flux, h over e, through the hole, then a single electron is transferred from the inside to the outside edge. Consider now the quantum spin Hall effect, in which for simplicity we have independent quantum Hall states for the up and down spins. I'd like to consider the effect of threading one half of a flux quantum, h over 2e. The reason h over 2e is significant is that in general the magnetic flux violates time reversal. But flux h over 2e is time reversal invariant because minus h over 2e differs from plus h over 2e by h over e, which can be gauged away. So threading half a flux quantum transfers um, half a upspin 
from the inside to the outside, and it transfers half of a downspin from the outside to the inside. So thus, no net charge is transferred between the inside and the outside, but the net effect is to transfer a single electron's worth of spin from the inside to the outside. The local spin on the inside thus changes from being integer to being half integer, or vice versa. This change in the spin has an important consequence due to time reversal symmetry. Half integer spins have a Kramers degeneracy, while integer spins do not. Thus, the ground state at the edge switches between being Kramers degenerate and not, and, and not being Kramers degenerate. Now, this is closely related to the, um, to the pattern of edge states as a function of momentum. Indeed, if one views this entire annulus as one single unit cell, then the magnetic flux plays the role of, um, of momentum, and you can see, um, you can understand this, this Kramer's parity switching that occurs when you thread half of a flux quantum. Now, whether this Kramer's parity changes when a flux h over 2e is inserted is a yes-no question that cannot change as long as the bulk gap remains finite. It is a topological criterion that remains valid when spin is no longer conserved and also remains valid when the electrons um, interact. It shows that topological and trivial insulators are distinct even with interactions. It guarantees that the edge of a topological insulator cannot have a unique ground state separated by a gap from, from the excited states. Because otherwise, it would be impossible to have the Kramer's degeneracy when the flux is pi. However, um, uh, this argument does not guarantee that the edge is gapless. In fact, for strong interactions, the helical edge will acquire a gap, um, somewhat analogous to the Pyrrhal's instability. However, what is guaranteed is that there will be two degenerate ground states um, which are related by time reversal symmetry. It's therefore, it's, it's like the edge is magnetic. There's a magnetic instability. Okay? It's actually an interesting question to, to uh, consider what happens if you have a magnetic, um, two magnetic ground states and you have a domain wall uh, between those magnetic uh, ground states. Um, uh, what one can show is that, that that domain wall is associated with a sharply quantized charge of E over 2. So this leads to a broader question of the interplay between symmetry, topology, and strong electron interactions. Now this is a fascinating subject, um, uh, which has many different aspects and has, actually, has seen a great deal of progress in the last few years. For example, the story of strong interactions at the boundary of a topological insulator is even richer um, for, the, uh, for the surface of a three-dimensional topological insulator. So this is also a subject which is not yet finished. And uh, I'm, I'm hopeful that maybe some of you can help us finish it. So I'd like to thank you for your attention, and I wish you all the best in your study of topology and condensed matter.